Okay, hello everyone. Uh, got an interesting topic today using the unseen therapist for children. Um, and I'm joined here today with one of our seasoned experts in the unseen therapist, optimal EFT, uh, Dr. Marion Billich. You want to say hello to everybody? Hi, everybody. Okay. She's got a couple of interesting uses here from her own experience, but I want to start this off with something that's really important. If we can, like when we're putting our children to bed at night, we tell them a story, et cetera, but we can ask them, you know, what went wrong with your day or what happened in your day to day, and they'll tell us whatever traumas they had and so on. But that's an ideal time to bring an unseen therapist for whatever happened that they didn't like that day. And not only does it help clear that baggage as they grow up, but very important. And I think Mary, one of Marion's stories is going to uh, pick up on this, is you begin them at a very early age to begin to rely upon their own wisdom within that's our unseen therapist um rather than the outside world the outside world may have some useful things etc but ultimately you want to really get used to that wisdom within and of course you're probably not going to want to call it the unseen therapist because you know young, young children don't get that mm -hmm. but we can call it you know some other Nice thing. Well, one of Marion's stories is the magic dancer. Okay. But anyway, Marion, you've got a couple of stories. So why don't you just pick up the ball and go from there? Okay. I'll start with the magic dancer. All right. And that was not one from work. That was with my granddaughter, who, when she was young, maybe eight, nine, was going through a very, very difficult time. And she would call me to talk about what was going on. And sometimes she'd be very, very upset. And one night when she called me very late at night, I decided to introduce her to the idea of the unseen therapist, knowing that this would be something she could turn to when I wasn't available. And I'm not always going to be available. So, um, I Like Gary said, I wouldn't use the word unseen therapist, that term, but she is a dancer. She was a dancer at nine, and she's forever going to be a dancer. That's really important, important to her. So I listened, and I heard in my head from the unseen therapist use the term the magic dancer. And the moment I said that to my granddaughter, <clears throat> it would just fit. It was right. So we started to ask the, the magic dancer questions. And sometimes she would do some healing. Sometimes she would say things to my granddaughter. And we continued to do this over a number of years. And she got better and better at hearing that inner voice. And I was so excited because to learn that when you're so young and to have that through your life because there's so many things that happen in life where you do need some guidance. I was just thrilled, but I was even more excited when I got an email from her this summer. She was away at a performing arts camp because of course she was dancing. And she said, I had a rough time last night. I was very upset, but the magic dancer really helped me. And when I got that email, I knew this is really part of her life now. She didn't even have to involve me in any way. And that was wonderful. So, Well, well that's fascinating. And let me just add something in here. I, we are teaching the unseen therapist in our advanced course and through my free book and, and so on um, in, a variety, in a variety of ways. But we're dealing with adults who are just now coming up to the summer of the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and so on. And if you've had a lifetime with without the foundation of asking the unseen therapist, trusting in it and developing that ability, it becomes a little more, it can, it's very doable. Yes, we teach it to adults all the time. But to have that at that young age, to be, I mean, from what you were saying, Marion, she's developed a, 
trust in the magic dancer. Yes. Would I be right? Yes. And she's a teenager now. She's not a yeah. kid anymore. Yeah. So. Okay. And, and she, she's already unloading baggage at an earlier age, which means by the time she gets 40 and 50 and so on, yeah. uh, that baggage is going to be a whole lot less than it would ordinarily be. You know? Yeah. Warms my heart. It really does. <laughs> okay. So did you finish that story or do you have the other one? Yeah, or? that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm sure uh -huh. there'll be things along the way as she gets older, but it's just wonderful that she has that resource now. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm sure we all wish that we had that when we were her age. Sure, sure. Um, oh. I also have a story um, from one of the, the kids I was working with because we had some difficulty with the idea of the unseen therapist. Of course, again, I didn't use that term, but I tried somehow to make an image in her mind of the unseen therapist. And we we meet online and she's usually in her bedroom. So she would take something like a doll that she loved or a stuffed animal she loved and try to see if she could relate to it, but that wasn't working. And then again, I heard in my inside my head, try just asking her to go into her heart and find her in her heart. And that's what she did. Um, we don't have a name. All she does is she goes into her heart and asks for healing or asks for information and it comes to her. And she's about, now she's about uh, 10 years old. She was nine when we started. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's amazing how fast the process goes. If she's disturbed about something, we're working on a traumatic experience she went through, which usually is a nine on a zero to 10 scale in terms of how intense her feelings are. And it'll go to a zero within seconds. And then days later, I will check and see how she's doing. And it's still a zero. And it's just a very fast process when you work with, with little ones. Yeah, as you well know, when you start working with adults, they have so many experiences by the time we're talking to them, mm -hmm. you know, in their later years, uh, that they have a lot of what we call aspects and things like that that are also attached to all of this and so on. Children seem to have less of that. They seem to, not, I can't say that's for, true for every single child, but generally speaking, uh, they're right in there swinging. You know, they, mm -hmm. it's a pretty easy thing for them. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so, so she goes to her heart, other people, you know, go to the good fairy or whatever they want to, mm. they want to call it. So also I wanted to point out for children like my granddaughter or this young girl I was working with, they don't have a lot of chatter in their head about how this is ridiculous or this won't work or what are people going to think? All the kinds of things that adults might might think of when they start doing this. Yeah, in fact, adults, it's a little phrase we have sometimes until we get beyond it, is this is sort of a woo-woo thing. We're asking some ethereal, unseen therapist because we're so used to getting advice from other from books and from you know TV and from a, experts and things out things outside of ourselves rather than things from within. That we tend to use the outside resources as our primary guidance. Okay? Yeah. It should be the other way around. We should be asking inwardly for the true guidance that's represented by the unseen therapist and is there for everybody. And then the other outside stuff would be a secondary source. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, when the inner guidance doesn't seem, we're not listening at the time or whatever happens to be occurring. So, so Marion, anything else? No, I think those two examples are uh, a good start. All right. Great. Great, Marion. Okay. okay. So I hope, I hope everybody found that useful. We do have some essential links that are, Below all of this, you know, they lead you to the, my free ebook on the unseen therapist and, 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 you know, newsletters and advanced training and things like that. So you can check those links out below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.